<laughs> sixth day of a uh, or sixth game of the day. Mind is fried, and what do you know? It's another Kador player. The third one. I've played all three now. Um, so yeah, and it's Butcher Three, homicidal maniac himself, bring in a whole bunch of weird stuff that I think is really cool because you know Butcher Three is always a blast to play against because he's freaking exciting and scary and you know he just takes you on a roller coaster of emotions of i am up on top of the world i destroyed his whole army oh no i'm down in the dumps because he killed my whole army and then yay i killed maybe killed him or i lost you know either way it's up and down because you get some hope trying to kill him and then you realize his feet says you can't charge him if you're a warrior model and that screws your plan somehow and then you just realize that he's, you know, 20 boxes, armor 18, and he has a dog to make him defense 16 against melee. And you're like, what the heck? But yeah, uh, so Butcher 3, cool stuff. Uh, Kador, yep. Uh, playing my typical Virus 2 list because at this point in the day, um, on my sixth game, I can pretty much only mentally field lists that I can run on autopilot. Um, yeah, yeah, that I, I think that sums this up perfectly. So these undead-looking Alexia One people corpse thingies are actually the uh, Chaosi assassins with the Underlord or the Underboss. And yeah, Eliminators are Eliminators over on the sides. Um, we've got two Kodiaks and a Ruin and some Mechanics and Alexia Two. And he brought, you can see them right now, um, there's one mechanic there. There used to be six mechanics. There's another mechanic back there, but a Kodiak, um, boiled them alive, kind of like shrimp or crabs with his steam cloud vent thing so that they could become souls for Alexia too, so that she can pop out some thralls whenever she wants to and just have weapon mar masters charge in there. And then she can repo away to safety. It's a pretty cool little synergy. Basically you bring like five or six mechanics and they turn into five or six thralls that pop out really far up on the lines. Uh, I really like it. Oh, and here's Yuri the Axe. Um, to sum things up, he went first, I went second, I went to here, I put some things in range, but not really. Uh, everything's out of the Eliminator's range. Uh, Eris is in one of their ranges, but they only have half-inch melee, so they can't swing over the wall, because it's like a three-quarter inch wall, and they can't land on the wall, and there's no landing spot, so I was like, eh, I'll sit here. Seems good. And, uh, yeah. Yuri's gonna charge in here and Thresher on some Griffins and Imperatus, and between the heels and Phoenix Shield, I think, eh, I'm just not going to care. And you know what? I'm not going to give up that much space to him anyways. He ends up doing like 14 or 15 damage to Griffin number one right there, uh, who should be the bestest Griffin by his number, but however, he is not. Um, so that was pretty exciting and pretty cool. And, um, you know, like 8 o'clock at night, we came alive because the dice came alive. So, and besides that, my opponent pretty much just moves things up and puts a whole bunch of Chaosi uh, Assassins up there. Charges, I think, Griffin number two right there in the middle. Um, they all just kind of come in like this, and then he starts filling in the other ones all over the place. Because with Duelist, they're actually somewhat, you know, annoying to kill. And, yeah, board looks like this. They've also got the plus two strength on them, uh, takedown from Butcher three which is a pretty good deal um i do think he should have run one of the dogs over into me um if he could really tow that zone with the dog so that way i have to kill it and trigger vengeance if i want to start scoring because i do go second and this is when scoring starts my plan is to basically uh kill the kodiak on the left Kill uh, all the stupid thralls that got into my face. They just ran up there. Kill the eliminators with the griffin. Looks like number three. He's just going to come whoop, right over there and kill them uh, once I have some synergy built up. And uh, th these other two griffins are just going to walk into the masses and start bopping chaos eliminator or assassins once, once synergy is built up. And Discordia hopefully is going to spray down and kill Alexia. Uh, so that's the plan. I need... So... There is there is some positioning strategy in this. Um, everything that I'm doing right now is kind of playing into what Butcher 3 wants, where he comes forward and kills your army. Now, there's an ideal... Because I can kill Butcher 3 with like any two or three of my models in this list. So there's a Butcher 3 strategy involved in this. Butcher 3 wants to split the map. He basically he wants you to spread out, and then he wants to kill an entire side of the map and be safe from the other side of the map. 
He wants to basically kill your a whole half of your army. So my plan is is to use Viro's two feet to try and cover that. I'll have Imperatus sort of in the middle on the right and Disco sort of middle on the left, and I'll stop. Uh, um, I'll stop. Um, Butcher 3 from getting into the middle and killing both of them. And whichever way he goes, I'll have them cover each other. And I'm going to use feet to try and be annoying and uh, contest zones and gum up his plans and keep him stuck. So that's more or less the plans. A lot of things happen. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That skipped way, way, way too much. Um, yeah. So everything that I talked about... Uh, earlier happened except for when disco went to spray he hit the dog uh needing an eight and then he missed alexia needing a boosted nine i think it was and uh i just decided to kill the dog since no matter what it's a pal 14 and it's armor 14 i'm gonna do damage and trigger vengeance so i just hose the thing uh kodiak dies to three griffins i have regrets i should have killed kodiak with discordia and not put three griffins over there reason being is that I don't know. I just need to get more melee use out of Discordia. I always shoot with his gun and then he dies. Um, his gun just has been getting him killed for me and I always regret it because that's three Griffins I could have put somewhere else and yeah, regrets. So basically how the map looks um, on his turn, and this is going to be a lot of drawing since the picture gets skipped, is Kodiak's gone. Yep, that's an X. And there's like three griffins here, and there's Disco here, and there's Alara behind the house because she shot Ruin to make it so he can't do crap. Imperatus is right here, and Viros 2 is way back here in a very safe place where feet movements can screw Butcher if he wants to come in. And I've got a griffin up there, and I've got a griffin right here, oh, uh, right here, and a griffin over here. And that's that's all my Arcanists are kind of forming a back line back here. Because I used every bit of focus getting all that stuff done. And so his turn, Ruin comes up and bops a griffin. Uh, Kodiak comes over and bops this griffin. Oh, he, sorry, he comes over and bops this griffin. And I start uh, moving this griffin up to take that one's place to bo block Butcher 3 as soon as this griffin dies. Because I don't want Butcher 3 coming into this sweet spot to uh, kill Imperatus and Disco, who are right here and right here. And I just made boobs. Undo, inappropriate. So, um, I start getting Griffins in the way. He starts bulldozing them out. And something, to his credit, I, I want to say something that he does very, very well is that he activates Butcher 3 absolutely last. Because normally, when Virus 2 pops feet and Imperatus can roam freely and go wherever he wants to go, as soon as the caster activates, Imperatus knows where he's going and I'm probably going to land an assassination. Um, that just tends to be how it sort of works out in these types of situations. He's either going to stop killing people and then I'm going to win on attrition or he's going to kill people and Imperatus is going to get to his caster. So, Imperatus ends up all the way over here as all these griffins die, and he's engaged um, to uh, the Kodiak, a Thrall, and he's chilling out over there. And if we remember, I've got this big old knot of griffins in Discordia. The idea is that if Butcher comes screaming over here, Imperatus and Discordia and Virus 2 can get him. Well, Butcher does come flying over here, so um, time to see if my plan actually will work. And I'm going to clear all this crap because it's too messy. So Imperatus is right here. Virus 2 is right here. There's a couple of thralls right here and right here. And Kodiak is more or less right there. And there's another thrall right here. The Griffin, 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 Eris, Discordia. Butcher 3 comes right over here behind that house. And he does his Butcher 3 thing and goes, Bleh! everyone die. So um, yeah, three Griffins and Eris and Discordia die. And with those movements, Imperatus takes a whole bunch of free strikes and walks all the way across the board to right over here. And Viros 2 walks to right here. And uh, Butcher energizes back to right about here. And then Chaosy Eliminators fill in right here to try and block. And a dog fills in right there. So that's his... And he's still got his line of jacks right here. So more or less, um, he has done the Butcher 3 thing where he splits the board. Now I have to, you know, like, 
Imperatus was my ace in the hole. He was my, if you do this, well, I'm going to kill you with Imperatus type thing. Well, he did it. So now it's time for Imperatus to either kill Butcher 3 or I'm going to lose epically because I just lost way too many Griffins and Discordia and he still has his Heavy Jacks and Butcher 3 who is basically like, you know, the ultimate Heavy Jack. Um, more or less, uh, how this plan works out is Virus 2 comes charging over here into the Eliminators, shoots them, quick works, shoots one of the Thralls that's blocking Imperatus' walk path, and then repos to safety. Synergies to one. Uh, one of my last Griffins comes up and, uh, like, smacks a Thrall or something, synergy to two. Gorgon comes up, smacks a Thrall, synergy to three. Imperatus, I'm going to get rid of all that stuff. Imperatus uh, comes walking around the house. The dog is still here intentionally because he doesn't have the walk range to get to. Um, he doesn't have the walk range to get to Butcher Two, who's right there. So Imperatus walks to right here, smacks the dog, and uh, dice plus six, needing a two, and uh, dog dies, and then sidesteps into Butcher, who's on a I want to say a two camp. And I do four attacks against him. The first uh, three trigger a tough, or the first three kill him, or the the third one kills him, and he goes onto the tough. And I have one attack left, and pfft, into the grave. So uh, it worked out. My Imperatus uh, walk all the way across the board and take a bunch of free strikes. Plan worked. Took a Kodiak free strike. I took a Thrall free strike. I took two Thrall free strikes actually. Um, and he was already damaged from taking a uh, Chaosi Assassin charge earlier. Oh, and the Thresher from Yuri. So, you know, he just, you know, just bit his lip and took a bunch of hits, got across the board and did the most important thing in the game. Because, um, yeah, the Madman pretty much got me in the attrition position he wanted. Yeah, I was also really hoping to shoot Butcher 3 with Eris. It just didn't work out because I think that would have stopped his feet from triggering and being able to reload the focus. Because I, I, if I remember right, it says you can't um, gain focus by any means. Like, I think literally that is what it says. Uh, that would oh, that would have been so cool and annoying. But yeah, uh, that, that was a very scary and roller coaster of a game, and I always love playing Butcher Three. It's always a lot of fun. I have, this is the second time playing Butcher Three with Viros Two. I don't know if I like playing Viros Two into Butcher Three. It just feels too too easy for me to lose. Like if I pop my feet and instead of uh, Butcher Three. Like how he came over here and killed all these Griffins and Discordia. If he instead had gone and hid behind his Congo line of Jacks um, with Imperatus right here and his Jacks blocking him and all my other dudes right here, I have no way of getting um, getting all my dudes over there to clear the Jacks. And even if I could get Imperatus to a full camp Butcher, Imperatus isn't going to kill a full camp Butcher, I don't think. Because it's five attacks and... Um, I, actually, he might. Because it's dice plus four. He'll shave it to be, every single time, to be dice minus one. He has 20 boxes. Maybe I do. Maybe even the fire kills him. So, yeah, may, maybe I do. Uh, but if he had done that, that would have been a lot scarier for me. Because getting Imperatus there might be really weird. Um, he also, you can't forget that he has that little war dog that's not one of his Arioguses, and it can counter charge um, when Imperatus starts sidestepping and actually get in Imperatus's way um, so that I can't sidestep to where I need to be. It worked out when I walked around the house over here that he was behind Butcher and he didn't have a good charge lane to get to an Imperatus. Otherwise, I could have been just absolutely screwed. Or basically, I would have had to have hit the dog and sidestepped off the dog and lost an attack that I want to put on Butcher. So I, I wouldn't have been screwed. But yeah. Um, also, for those of you that don't know uh, the Butcher 3 thing, when I just went on the board over here and scribbled that it all died, what that meant was uh, Butcher has a feat where he regains up to his full focus of 6. He uh, gets vengeance when you kill his dog, so he goes 3. Um, he speed five, so he charges eight, and he can energize her for another two. 
Um, so three, eight, two. So that's uh, that's thirteen right there. Um, with two inch reach, and uh, he has a spell called Impending Doom, where everything within five inches of you gets pulled into him until it becomes base to base with him. And he has a spell called Flashing Blade, where he makes a melee attack at Mount Nine, Mount Nine, Pow, sixteen to eighteen Weapon Master against everything in his melee range. So it basically becomes a blender and looks exactly like this, um, where the color pink is the bodies of whatever you brought that turned into Blender food from Butcher Three's Impending Doom and uh, Flashing Blade. And you know he goes through his six focus doing all that, and then he just uh, pops feet and can't be charged by warrior models. And gets all his focus back, and either he keeps buying attacks until, you know, the Colossal's dead, if he happened to choose a Colossal to pick on. What a bully. Uh, but he, then he's hard to kill, because he has all that focus again, and he's an armor 18, defense 14 to 16, with uh, 20 boxes, and can't be charged in, by warrior models, and has a decent camp on him. So that's that's the Butcher 3 Blender, that's why he's scary. He also has a lot of non-linear threat ranges, like... Um, Vengeance can bring him over three inches. Energizer can bring him over another two inches. He can do all of his in, he can do impending doom and flashing blade to clear a lane, and then he can charge something, and then he can do impending he can impending doom feet and start doing flashing blades and killing stuff again. So he can have separate little blenders all the way through, where he just blenders over here, then goes over here and blenders. Um, it's he's he is freaking nuts. He's really fun. He's really hard to deal with. And you're like, oh, well, you know, I'll just hide my caster behind a, house, or a forest because that seems really cool. So then he vengeance is over, he energizers, and he charges a dude right here. And uh, he happens to have five to your caster, and he impending dooms. And the caster gets pulled um, across from the forest uh, into Butcher. And then, you know, Butcher does the thing where he kills your caster pretty much regardless of who your caster is. Um, unless you have some way of... I don't know, something, <laughs> something really, really, some nice ace up your sleeve to not just die. Um, he's he's a real caster killer that comes from really, really far away. And the reason why I had Virus 2 behind the objective is because the objective can't be pulled and because then Virus 2 would get stuck into the objective and messing with his 5-inch impending doom range is a really, really good way of uh, not getting assassinated. Things that prevent pushing, pulling, or spells are also a good way of not getting a Butcher 3 not killing you. Um, I also had feet, so as soon as he starts killing Griffins or something like that, I can just move Virus 2 away or move Imperatus into a spot where he's out of Butcher 3's threat range, and then Virus or Imperatus can just go kill him. Like uh, th There's lots of counterplay I can do with Virus 2's feet. So, yeah. Um, that was a great game. I have talked forever, but you know what? All my other games have been super fast. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this really long and, you know, mind numbing video of mine that I had. This is the sixth freaking game of the day. Oh my goodness. Oh, more Legion is on the way.